Today we're going to be doing an overview and first look at the Pro series of higher end AR components from Aero Precision. I actually re-barreled one of my rifles to a 16 inch Aero Precision Pro barrel and swapped the bulk carrier group for an Aero Precision Pro BCG. I'm going to be shooting this one for a while, seeing how it holds up. We may do a follow up video later on if I get any new data or if anything changes. But for now, let's just talk about the different components that make up the Aero Precision Pro series where they fall into the pantheon of middle to higher end AR stuff. Talk about if they're something that you might actually be interested in or if there are other options that are better value on the market. Let's go for it. Aero Precision recently introduced the Pro series, which is a higher end series of ARs and AR components. So far, there's actually not much to it. It's just a series of barrels and a bolt carrier group. And there's still really no such thing as a complete Aero Precision rifle. They are using the Buffoni business model of selling uppers and lowers separately to avoid getting killed by excise tax. The AR community's collective level of autism has been ratcheting up over the last couple of years, and Aero Precision went from being a mid-range manufacturer that was pretty well respected amongst the serious autists in the community to being considered an entry-level brand, which I don't think is really a fair assessment, but then again, I'm not the tastemaker in these communities. The Pro Series is a little bit higher end, maybe to help them regain their reputation as being above an entry level spec, or maybe to court police contracts by creating something that's duty grade. When we talk about the higher end of the AR market, a lot of terms get used like mil spec, duty grade, or competition. Two thirds of those terms are meaningless, and all three of them are definitely open to interpretation. Alright, so what actually is the Pro Series? Currently, it consists of three barrels and one bolt carrier group. The new Pro Series barrels are cold hammer forged, and as far as I know, they are not made by Ballistic Advantage, because Ballistic Advantage does not have the capability to produce cold hammer forged barrels. In the years past, there were only a couple of companies who OEM'd cold hammer forged barrels. For example, FN makes a lot of the cold hammer forged barrels on the market. Some companies just use FN Cold Hammer Forge barrels under their own brand. For example, I'm pretty sure Spike's Cold Hammer Forge barrels are made by FN. Other companies just use FN marked Cold Hammer Forge barrels in their guns. For example, the new PSA Saber series. Cold Hammer Forge barrels are, first of all, much more expensive than traditionally button rifled barrels, but they have desirable wear properties. In theory, a Cold Hammer Forge barrel will greatly outlast a traditionally button rifled barrel. If we use the term mil spec to refer to a barrel, that usually means two things. One is cold hammer forged barrel process, and the other is a chrome lining to the bore and chamber. The Aero Precision Pro barrels are cold hammer forged, but they are not chrome lined. So mil spec is not really the right term to use for the barrels. It's more like half mil spec, or I guess duty grade, but both of those are such nebulous terms, I'm not even sure why we're bothering. The Aero Precision Pro Series bulk carrier group is most definitely not mil spec. Like with a barrel, a mil-spec bolt carrier group kind of implies two things. One is a mil-spec material, meaning the bolt will be made out of Carpenter 158 steel. The second thing is, once again, chrome lining. Aero Precision opted to create a higher-end bolt carrier group for the Pro Series, but without going into mil-spec. So the bolt head is made out of 9310 steel, which is quite a lot more common for civilian non-mil-spec bolt carrier groups. It's also what the bolt heads are made out of on their normal bolt carrier groups. Talking about bolt steel on the internet is always a fun conversation because people tend to be extremely strongly opinionated about it. Carpenter 158 steel is the mil spec steel for a bolt head. 9310 steel is increasingly common, and at least according to companies who make 9310 bolts, they say that a properly heat treated 9310 is as strong or stronger than Carpenter 158. I don't think you could pay me to give a shit about bolt steel. There are even other alternatives, like the bootleg adjustable bolt carrier group, which is made entirely out of S7 tool steel. If I remember my steels correctly, that's even stronger than 9310 or Carpenter 158. The point is that the Pro Series bolt carrier group definitely doesn't seem any more mil spec than their regular Aero Precision bolt carrier groups. I guess it mostly comes down to tiny little features and quality control stuff, which you can read on the back of the box. The Pro Series barrels are currently available in three lengths, 12, 5, 13, 7, and 16 inches, all with a mid-length gas system. These are not government profile barrels or pencil profile barrels. The barrel profile is very much a modern contour style, like you might see on a BA Hansen, Criterion barrels, or Black River Tactical's Optimum barrels. Aero Precision was nice enough to send me this barrel to fuck around with. I bought the Pro Series bolt carrier group, as well as a fresh Aero low profile gas block and tube, so that I could rebarrel this gun. Initially, I put a superlative arms gas block on there because I wanted to kind of play with it a little bit, but after tuning the gas back and forth a little bit, I realized there's essentially no point. Took the suppressor mount off, now it just has a flash hider on it, and I prefer it that way. I don't want to run this thing suppressed at all. Aero Precision seems to be using a fairly conservative gas port size on these barrels. The gassing is kind of similar to a Hansen barrel. 
If you're shooting it unsuppressed, you don't have to use a heavy buffer to make it shoot properly. In fact, if you're expecting to have to use one and you drop like an H2 or an H3 in there, you might actually get functioning problems. There's no reason to expect that a properly gassed barrel should cycle if you're using a heavy buffer and shooting cheap 223 spec ammunition. This rifle currently has an H1 buffer in it, and with no suppressor and the fixed gas system, it works perfectly fine. The ejection is immaculate. I don't really care beyond that. I don't like tuning rifles. I'm pretty sure all that shit is just snake oil. So are the Aero Precision Pro Series parts a good buy if you're trying to go a little bit more high-end with your rifle? I think they make an interesting comparison to Expo Arms, which is Primary Arms' in-house brand, kind of similar to how AR Stoner was Midway USA's in-house brand, except Expo Arms is much, much better than AR Stoner ever was. Expo Arms has a series of barrels, which kind of look like they're made by Roscoe, that are not cold hammer forged, but they are chrome lined. Those are significantly cheaper than the Aero Precision Pro barrels, but cold hammer forging is, I think, a much more desirable attribute than just chrome lining is by itself. Ultimately, I guess it seems like Aero Precision's Pro lineup is pretty minimal, and I don't think it's really intended to be the next big thing, more like an option perhaps just for police agencies who want to buy a cold hammer forged barrel for their duty rifles. For the competition guys out there, I think they're more concerned with their muzzle devices and their choice of optics, and they don't really give a crap if their barrel is cold hammer forged or not. For me personally, I like the Pro Series barrels. I like the idea of something similar to a Ballistic Advantage Hansen. A lightweight contour that isn't too lightweight, conservative gas port sizes, but with the added hard use advantage of being cold hammer forged instead of button rifled. The bulk carrier group I find less compelling, even though I don't actually care if it's 9310 or Carpenter 158. But it seems to me that if you wanted a mil spec bulk carrier group, you could get, for example, the one from Expo Arms, which is Carpenter 158 and is chrome lined. If you just want a normal nitride bolt carrier group, well, you can save money and just get the regular Aero Precision bolt carrier group. The attributes that supposedly set the Pro Series BCG apart are kind of hard to quantify. I know we all watch School of the American Rifle and get really anxious about the longevity of our parts, but then again, I could also point to my $48 bolt carrier group that I bought years ago when I first started getting into building ARs. That thing is total mystery meat, but aside from the regularly scheduled replacement of the gas rings, which you have to do with every bolt carrier group, it has given me no trouble whatsoever and has shown no signs of premature failure. I'm not really sure if Arrow can add anything else to the Pro Series. Why would they make a Pro Series handguard? They already make a full complement of handguards and they're a good design, albeit a little bit expensive, a little bit heavy. A Pro Series buffer tube and buffer system that would just basically be a knockoff of the Viltor A5? Maybe like a Pro Series lower parts kit that just comes with a slightly better trigger instead of the mil spec one? Other than that, I don't really know. As long as they don't start doing a Pro Series billet receiver set with hideous, aggressive machine work, I guess I'm okay with it. Anyway, this rifle is now set up just the way Hop likes it, so I plan to shoot this thing extensively and keep an eye on these parts going forward. It's not going to be some kind of 10,000 round torture test because I don't have that kind of time or ammo. I've got a lot of other rifles I need to shoot to actually make videos about. This one is just going to be a standby rifle in the inventory because it's got all my favorite parts on there. TA-11 ACOG, D-Ball I-2, Surefire Vampire, Tasteful Flash Hider. God, I love it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. As always, I'll try to answer them if I possibly can. If you like this channel and you would like to support me, you can do so via Subscribestar. Link in the video description. See you next time.